Having played this game for over a thousand hours, I know the drill when it comes to starting a run. I take a minute or two deciding who I want to play, and then another minute just to make sure I have my loadout just right. Regardless of who I end up picking, I always end up clicking on Start Run. From here, the control is taken out of my hands and given over to the game. Will I start off in Distant Roost, or will I find myself at Titanic Plains? Does it make any difference if I get one or the other? If so, how much? Well, there are a lot of factors to take a look at when comparing the two stages. So many, in fact, I could spend hours digging into each detail between the two. And since this is just a video and not a capstone essay, I'm only going to focus on a few of the major talking points between the two, and then finish off by explaining when you will want one stage over the other. The first of these factors we're going to focus on is the size and shape of the map. Now when we take a look at Titanic Plains, we notice that the map's layout is open and flat, allowing for us to find loot easily, and it gives low mobility survivors a friendly, nurturing ground to build up their kit. On the contrary, Distant Roost is a multi-layered, enclosed environment full of dead-end pathways. Despite the stage having less surface area, these paths result in it taking more time to find and grab loot, not to mention the risk they present when it comes to fall damage. Also to note with Roost is that both variants of the map have areas that sometimes are or are not closed off. These extra areas, when open, do not increase the amount of loot that spawns, making the loot more sparse, and in addition adds extra space for us to cover. Moving on, the next factor we're going to take a look at is the location of the Newt Altars. These beauties are a guaranteed ticket to the bazaar, of which can provide some game-changing options, such as going to the Void, selecting the next stage, gaining free Lunar items, or if you have enough items after stage 1, you might have a shot at trading up for a good red or green item. You know those occasional extra zones I was talking about earlier? Well, they aren't completely bad. The one good thing they provide is a means of accessing some of the Lunar Altars. On both variants, a stone gate exists off the side of a cliff. Whether opened or closed, a Lunar Altar can be found behind them. Other locations for the Altars on Roost are mostly easy to reach locations, with the exception of this one that sits on a rock on the original variant. Screw you, rock. One more thing to add about Roost. There's a small chance that zero altars will appear on the original variant. If you find yourself in this situation, tough luck, buddy. While we may find that Roost is inconsistent with its lunar spawns, Plains offers an altar guaranteed on each stage. The problem with these altars is that they often spawn in hard to reach locations where you need high vertical mobility to reach them, with the exception of a couple. So enough about the geographical features. Let's shift the focus to some of the more ecological differences between these two biomes, like interactables and enemies. Do these differ at all between the two? Well, believe it or not, but both maps share the exact same enemies. Beetles, lesser and greater wisps, lemurians, and golems is what is offered, whether it is roost or plains, with beetle queens, stone titans, and wandering vagrants being your three options for the boss. When we take a look at the interactables, however, that is where we begin to see the stages take their own forms. Let's first take a look at Distant Roost. Unique interactables here include Blood Shrines and Shrines of the Woods. Blood Shrines can grant money equivalent to $1 for every 2 health lost by 1, meaning that since they take health away based on a percentage of the max HP, high hit point survivors can benefit more from them. Another thing to note about these is that all money earned during the final couple seconds of the stage will transfer over to the next stage, so hitting a blood shrine in the last second is a good call, regardless of our healing situation. Now, speaking of healing, shrines of the woods can be used as a means of healing if we find ourselves without any other way to heal, as uh, they don't heal very quickly and don't follow us around as opposed to healing drones, or they don't even come to the next stage with us. 
Now, when located near a blood shrine, shrines of the woods can be used to recover lost HP after hitting the blood shrine to allow for us to quickly get all of our money we can from one, even though when doing this it still can take some time. Heading over to Titanic Plains, while we won't find any blood or woods shrines, we will instead find combat shrines. I should first start off by saying that all enemies have a value multiplier to them as to how much money and experience they grant on kill. Enemies that are already present at the start of a map only give one third as much money and experience as enemies that spawn in during the level, not leaving you with much to work with. Combat shrines offer instant enemies that don't have any weird multipliers added to them, allowing you to quickly level up and get a good amount of money without the guarantee of losing health. Since this is a Roost vs. Planes video and not a Blood Shrine vs. Combat Shrine video, I'm not going to entirely determine mathematically which one is superior over the other, but I will note that I have a personal preference towards the Combat Shrine as I tend to play on harder difficulties such as Monsoon or Eclipse where health is hard to recover and sometimes isn't able to be recovered at all. Another interesting fact about Planes is that Lunar Buds have a much higher spawn rate when compared to Roost. On average, for uh, every Lunar Bud found on Roost, you can expect to find two or three on Planes. The reason for this? Well, to answer that, we're going to have to take a look at the Director. Meet the Director. They have two separate budgets for two separate jobs. Their first budget is a constant source of income that they can use to spend on spawning enemies to try to kill you. We don't need to focus on this, however, as it is their second job that determines what interactable spawn. For this task, the director has a set budget at the start of each stage. For each interactable they attempt to purchase, they first randomly select what category they wish to take from. Each category has its own weight, and these weights can vary from one map to another. After the category is selected, we move on to another randomized selection of which item from this category is to be selected. Again, every value varies based on the map. Now, if we compare the category and subcategory tables for both maps, we will find that while the category weights are the same, there are a few differences in the subcategories, that being in the chest section and in the shrine section. In the shrine section, we know that Roost has different shrines apart from planes. However, with this comes some consequences. You see, if we look at the weights of the Mountain and Chance Shrine, both shrines that grant items, hold the same weights of 1 and 4, respectively. However, they end up having different spawn rates, with planes getting a boss or chance shrine more often than roost. Why is this? Well, while blood and combat shrines parallel one another with identical weights of 3, the shrine of the woods shoves itself into roost with a weight of 2, making its shrine pool skewed, and reducing the amount of average items one will get each time they end up on roost. Doing the math right, this should reduce the item rate per credit spent on Roost by about 3%. But when we look at the numbers, this is only a difference of around 1%. Why is this? Well, remember what I was saying about Lunar Pods and Planes? It turns out the reason they are so much more common there is because their weight is actually doubled in the chest subcategory. More chances for pods means less chances for chests, which just about offsets the shrine advantage. But hey, having more Lunar Pods can be pretty cool. So, doing all of this, we can determine that Planes has about 1% more items, right? No, that's wrong. You see, there is one final factor that has not been revealed yet that will change the way Roost is viewed forever. Earlier, it was mentioned that different maps have different varying amounts of director credits, and well, this is the case between these two. The game devs actually had the audacity to give Planes more credits than Roost. 40 additional credits, to be exact. This boosts Titanic Planes to hold around 24% additional items on average, along with 14% more equipment, and not to mention the higher count of drones and printers, of which can really help with early game. Knowing all this, let us return back to our original question. Does it make any difference between getting one stage over the other? Yes, absolutely! Starting on Roost will generally give us less loot to choose from, reducing the power of our builds and overall negatively impacting our run. Unless we think blood shrines are worth giving up one or two items, 
there's very little to no reason to want Roost as the starting stage. The only real reasons beyond Blood Shrines I can think of is getting to enjoy a different environment for the sake of variety or for the challenge, but there is not much more beyond that. One would be better off ending the run and restarting if they were to end up starting on Roost, and frankly, that is something I hope gets addressed in the future.